the scientific reason is our brain, our nervous system, our body has evolved over millions of years of evolution to adapt to the environment, survive, procreate, and pass on our genes to the next generation. Yeah, so that's from mm. a scientific perspective. And people don't realize this, but actually we haven't just evolved as, as human beings. Our DNA actually contains the DNA of the lineage. So from plant life to invertebrates, to vertebrates, to reptiles, mammals, human beings, uh, we actually have the same, 40% of our DNA is the same as a banana, which I find absolutely fascinating, right? And so we've evolved to survive. And so let's say COVID comes along. So because I know a lot of people have, uh, we all know someone who's gotten long COVID or been impacted by COVID. So COVID yeah. comes in. And normally our immune system switches on. It fights off the COVID infection. It then switches off. System comes back to balance. That's the normal way of things occurring. But sometimes certain people's brains, it will maladapt to that situation. And uh, mm. to explain this in a really simple way, uh, Freddie, I don't know, are you a fan of Game of Thrones by any chance? Or Huge. Huge fan of Game of Thrones. Well, you'll love this analogy then. You'll love this analogy. So imagine you are King Freddy, right? King Freddy. has got a nice ring to it, I think. King I, Freddy. I'd go with it. You're the master of your kingdom. Okay, so you are the owner of your kingdom. You're the king of your kingdom. And you have an army and a navy. So your army is your nervous system. Your navy is your immune system. And they are in charge of protecting your kingdom and your castle. Yep, so far so good. And in comes an invading army. Let's say it's COVID-19. Your army and navy are galvanized. Your nervous system and immune system have the intelligence to find the invading army, figure out how to defeat it, and then go on to defeat it and fire off their war machines to defeat the infection. And then they go back to balance. But let's say there's been a drought in your kingdom. So suddenly the kingdom is weaker, but the army and navy is weaker as well. Right, so this is, goes back to your question of why do some people get it and not others? So let's just say there's a, some unique vulnerability in the kingdom. And suddenly COVID-19 comes over the hill, but your army and navy now need to work twice as hard to defeat it. Yeah. And imagine a scenario which often happens where you've got like five or 10 soldiers and there's suddenly 200 enemies coming over the hill, those soldiers would become traumatized by that effect of war because their very existence is under threat. So now your army and navy fight valiantly and they only just manage to fight off the invading army, but they're left traumatized. So they, the generals of the army and navy, they come to you, King Freddy, on their weekly meeting and say, King Freddy, we need all the resources now because we only just managed to defeat the invading army. We need the corn, the wheat, the metal, all the resources now need to be channeled to the army and navy. And you as the king think, well, that makes sense. We've got to, if, if we don't protect the kingdom and we all fall, then we all perish, right? So it's a logical thing for the brain to do. And then what happens is the brain becomes what we call, there's something called differential activation. It's a very kind of fancy neurological term, but essentially the brain now starts hyper responding. So before it took an army to come over the hill, for your army and navy to fire off their weapons of war. But now mm. a man on a horse coming over the hill, that's enough for your immune system and nervous system to get galvanized and fire off their machines. Then what happens is, as they are using up all the resources of the kingdom, some of those arrows start falling back in the kingdom. And that's where you get the inflammatory effects affecting the body and some of these autoimmune effects that can also occur. Mm. Then what happens is because all the resources are going to the army and navy, normally you had a secret service that would fight off spies that had infiltrated your kingdom. But now they, don't, they can't do that either. So now opportunistic infections, bacterial, viral, they start flourishing in the body, causing even more problems in the kingdom. Yeah. Mm. And allergies and sensitivities go up as well. So the kingdom, the people in the kingdom are also getting riled up and trying to defend the kingdom. So now you have a kingdom which is not in homeostasis and balance. It's in this inflamed state. It keeps firing off its weapons of war against a non-existent enemy, keeping the whole system weak. And that invading army over the hill could be a virus. It could be a bacteria. It could be a toxin. It could be mold or a chemical. Whatever is that invading army over the hill, now the system is in this hyper aroused, hyper defensive state because survival is more important. Like the, the army and navy don't care whether 
everyone's drinking and having a good time in the kingdom. What they care about paramount is defense and survival. And that's what our genes prioritize as survival. So our system cares more about survival than it does wellness. And that's how we stay in this altered state. And brain retraining is saying, when they come to your weekly meeting and say, King Freddy, we need all the resources. You're then saying, the war is over. You can stand down, go on standby so that the kingdom can return to normal. I know mm. you feel threatened, but the threat is over. And you, they won't listen the first time. And that's what, where neuroplasticity comes in, they've got to be told again and again and again. So that in, a, in summary is the, the hypothesis. And they go to specifically your question, why do some people get it and not others? This comes down to how pre-trained those army generals are. And this often comes down to our entire lifetimes. So I believe that the factory setting of our brain in terms of how responsive it is, starts in the womb. So if our mother was anxious whilst she was pregnant with us, then that has an impact on the factory setting of our amygdala, which we'll come on to in a moment. Then mm. the birth experience. But most importantly, those five to 10 years of life, our first five to 10 years, how traumatic they were for us. Did we feel a sense of nurture and safety or did we feel those adverse childhood experiences where we went through certain challenges with our family or siblings or whatever it may be? That creates the factory setting so that as an adult, if we've become primed to defend against emotional threats, the same neurological systems are primed to over-defend against biological threats. Because as we said, the brain doesn't differentiate between the different types of threats. So that now as an adult, when we experience mold or a virus or a bacterial infection, we are the people who are more likely to over-respond and therefore potentially get these conditioning effects where the brain then gets stuck and we get chronic illness.